growing up in, in elementary school, you know, people, the teachers always ask you like, oh, write down your five-year goal and your 10-year goal, right? And, um, you know, people ask me that sometimes, like, hey, where do you want to be in 10 years from now? But like outside of our real estate deals that we know we're going to hold for 10 years, I'm like, dude, I'm not even thinking more than 12 months out because like what I think I want five years from now is going to be different when I get there. And if it's not different, that means that I'm not growing. So like if you would ask me five years ago, I mean, five years ago, I was an air traffic controller. I didn't own any investment real estate. So if you would ask me five years ago what I, what I wanted or if I thought I'd be here, like I would have thought it was crazy. But also if I had a five-year goal back then and I was like, I'm just going to stick to this thing, I wouldn't be where I'm at today because I wouldn't have been open to the growth and I wouldn't have been open to those opportunities because I would have been blinded by them. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of The Reports. Today, I am very, very excited. Actually, i got to back up a second before I bring in our guest today. I actually spent... 12 hours uh, in the chair last night uh, at the tattoo shop, getting, getting uh, this whole piece done. And uh, I thought it was gonna be like a four hour thing. And so I get, it, get to tattoo shop at, at five and uh, we had planned out the art piece like a, a little bit before. And uh, I'm thinking we'll jump in at five, go and I'll be out of there by 10 o'clock, no big deal. And uh, turns out uh, we ended up going till 5.15 in the morning. <laughs> I pulled an all nighter at the tattoo shop because uh, we got halfway done and I was like, I don't want to come back. But uh, <laughs> so I'm like, let's just, let's just run this thing. Let's get it done. So it was, it was a definitely interesting night, but got it all done. So excited for that. But I'm very excited for our guest today because I got a mindset coach who uh, works with a lot of bigger names. I got my man, Jason Dries. Jason, welcome to the show. Thanks, Rich. Excited to be here. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm so excited for this conversation right now. Um, I've never had a mindset coach on and I love talking mindset. You know, as I mentioned before we started recording, uh, I was an air traffic controller for the FA for like 11 years, and I didn't get into entrepreneurship, uh, real estate investing until five years ago. This is an entire new world for me. And so I've, I've done a, a lot of this in trial and error. You know, I have a business coach and I'm around a lot of cool people. I'm in a, a bunch of mastermind communities as well, but I'm wrapped around a lot of great people. Um, and I get to interview people that are smarter than me on the podcast, which is great. Right. And that's been a big token to, to, uh, the, uh, the growth so far, but uh, you know, I realize there's levels to the game. And in order to get to that next level, it all starts with the mindset and it ends with the mindset. It's freaking crazy, man. Mindset's everything. It's yeah. Everything. Yeah. yeah. It's always there. Always there. Yeah, absolutely, man. So, you know, talk a little bit about uh, the mindset. When, when folks get into business, they get into entrepreneurship, or maybe it's just a side hustle, right? Talk a little bit about mindset and the belief. Because, you know, for me, if I believe something and I believe I'm going to actually accomplish it, I, I believe it's already happened in my mind. It freaking happens. Like, and I'm a big believer in like burning the boats, not having a backup plan and just going all in. I think a lot of businesses fail because, uh, not because they run out of money, they fail because the entrepreneur gives up, you know? And a lot of that starts with the mindset. So um, talk a little bit about how powerful the mindset is for, you know, a new entrepreneur getting into that new business venture. So, yeah, so mindset is important for everything, right? It's the, the, the way to think about it. And it's also a hard concept to explain. <laughs> It's actually a very strange experience being an expert in something that's very hard to explain what it is, you know? But the thing, what mindset is, is like your brain, like my brain is a computer, it catalogs things, right? So however many years you've been alive, it's got where you were, when you went to school, how you were parented, where you work, the music, movies, all that stuff, right? And that basically creates your expectations of how life is, right? And when we're aiming at targets, what I call known targets, things we know how to do, our experience is an asset. When we're aiming at things we don't know how to do, becoming, starting a new business, something like that, where we're in the unknown, your mindset is usually the biggest limiting factor in the process. That's interesting. So, um, and, and I, I think whenever people get into something new, myself included, when I get into real estate investing, um, a lot of folks told me, you know, it's too risky. I cashed out my 401k, I quit my job after I did a few deals. And each step along the way was scary because a lot of folks told me it was too risky. They outlined all the risks that could happen. And um, yeah, all those risks are real, so put some weight on it. But you know, I, I realized a lot of people, and I see this today, a lot of people, they have this idea or they, they want to go buy a piece of real estate or they want to start that business and they go to their friends and family for advice and those friends and family never owned a piece of real estate, they never uh, started a business before and those folks talk them out of, the, of doing it. And a lot of that's mindset, right? It is, right? You know, it, and, and becoming an entrepreneur is a, it's a solo journey, you know, it's, it's a, and it's a lonely journey as well. Because what often happens, and this is what happens for me and happens to a lot of people, is we start doing something, we get inspired to play bigger. We start playing bigger, we're like, oh my God, I made a success. Oh my God, I made a dollar. Maybe I can replace my income. 
And what usually happens, uh, that first win we get is exciting. So we go to the people around us and say, oh my God, look, I made a dollar. And everybody's like, what are you talking about? That's such a risk. The safest thing you can do is have a job. And you're like, mm -hmm. so then what happens is we were looking for that support and acknowledgement, but we don't get it because that's not how life works, right? Because you don't get that support and acknowledgement is when you get it is when you don't, when you don't need it anymore, right? Because my process of becoming a coach was like, I'm leaving a decent paying tech job. I'm going to work for Tony Robbins. Yeah, they pay 60 bucks an hour. How am I going to support my family? I don't know. But I couldn't do anything. So, so people just, I had times where my brother-in-law called me and told me he was going to raise my kids because I'm such a failure. You know, we run food assistance from the state at one point. But as you said, I never stopped, right? It, that's the thing. So I never stopped and I pushed through. And that's what allowed me to move through that phase where you're not getting the support you want. Because most people around you haven't started a business, so they're not going to be able to give you the input that's supportive. Mm -hmm. And I feel like as you grow um, as, a, as an entrepreneur, it, it gets lonelier as you grow. Because less and less people can relate to you and, and relate to the problems that you're going through and all that sort of thing. And that's, that's one of the reasons I have a business coach um, is because, you know, a lot of the stuff that I go through weekly, you know, put, we're putting out a lot of fires. A lot of decisions need to be made. And um, I, there's not a ton of people that can truly relate to what that's like. But uh, my business coach, I jump on with them once a week for an hour. And we walk through scenarios and, and situations that are currently going on within the business. And it just helps me reframe and get some mental clarity. Yeah, having, having a coach is, is one of like the three resources you need on your team. Yeah, I mean, if you look at, uh, you know, all the top performers at, at every level, you know, whether it's professional sports or, um, you know, acting, mu music, um, all these, these, uh, these big names out there, they all have coaches at every level. And so the idea that you would get into business and entrepreneurship and not have uh, a coach is like, you're, you're not putting yourself in the best position to win, you know? Um, talk a little bit about um, the thought process when people have an idea or a target that they want to achieve. I think most folks, you know, they have an idea or a target and then they get into this big planning phase. And because the plan is never going to be perfect, a lot of those folks never start. Can you elaborate on, on that and the thought process that differs between most folks and the folks out there that are successful? So this, this comes up, this is one of the, the basic concepts of success, basic components of success, what I call getting in the game, right? It's almost like, because I've had a lot of clients there that are like standing on the sideline trying to analyze getting into the game, right? It's almost like you're standing on the sideline on a basketball court, ready to go in the game. You want to go play. And then the person you're going to sub for just gets an elbow in their face and the nose is broken, right? So, so you get to this place where it's very easy to start analyzing everything and trying to create success, especially people who are typically more detail oriented, like high C disc profiles like that. They're very analytical systems builders. They'll get stuck because they're perfectionists, right? And, and, and especially in investing or, or being an entrepreneur, the reason you get stuck there is because you cannot control the outcome. You can't control the outcome because the outcome of success of an investment or a business involves other people and we can't control other people. So we, people get, so the way to get past that is, is a belief that you just naturally adopted, which was, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to figure out how, right? Where most people like try to figure out how, and then they decide to do it. Yes. So that's, that's what I call, you know, and I first got this from Tony Robbins, which was um, decide, commit, figure it out how, basically, instead of decide, plan, commit, because then you get stuck, right? Yeah, I love that. Um, I, always, I always feel like whenever I come up with a new idea now, I'm like, let's freaking implement it right away. Let's, let's take action. And, and, and the team's always like, oh, well, how are we going to get there? What do we, how, how do we know we're, what we're going to, you know, resources and all this stuff. I'm like, guys, it doesn't matter. We'll figure it out. Let's just freaking, let's start. Let's get going. And, uh, and then next thing you know, like we're, we're figuring it out and, and shit's happening because we decided to just take action. And, you know, I think when you give yourself a, a, self a deadline to uh, achieve something or figure something out, you figure it out. I, I've never been in a situation in my life to where I have not figured it out. And I've, uh, the more I grow, uh, the more uh, stickier situations I find myself in, but I always figure out a way to get out. And each one of those reps gives me more and more confidence. You know, I think like, uh, you know, when people talk about partnerships within business, the top two things that I look for is, is one, are they a good human being? Are they aligned with, with the, the brand and the person that you want to be putting out there to the universe? Um, how do they talk to people? Are they respectful and all that sort of thing? That's number one. Um, and then number two is what is their level of risk tolerance? And is that aligned with your level of risk tolerance? Because if a lot in business and in real estate investing is you got to have some sort of level of risk tolerance and you got to be okay with some unknown. Like you're not going to have all the answers because once you have all the answers, 
for an opportunity, it's no longer an opportunity. The opportunity is gone, right? True. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. Um, you know, I, I've been in partnerships in the past um, and uh, I bought a lot of real estate with my first two partners and it was a very tough decision, but I decided almost two years ago um, that I was no longer going to reach my full potential under that current structure. And it was a very tough decision, but I ultimately decided to go my separate way. And one of the reasons was because, well, actually the main reason was because we had a much different level of risk tolerance. I'm a very confident person. I'm very confident that uh, push come to shove, like we will figure out any situation scenario that you put us through, uh, we'll figure it out, we'll get it done. And, um, you know, and, and being in a partnership like that, where it was like, you know, it's three people, majority vote, you know, um, I kind of felt like I was, my ideas were never going to, you know, be something that, that we could utilize because uh, it was kind of like, I was kind of outnumbered, if you would. So it was a tough decision. I decided to go my own, but I will say this, Jason, um, me going on my own just in the last year and in nine months, I've had more growth in this last year and nine months than I ever did the prior 37 years of my life, you know? Um, but anyways, that, I think those are number one and two for me, but uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, yeah, like the, that working with people that you align with is an important thing, right? And integrity and values is the number one thing, right? Risk tolerance is also a very key factors in like, you know, one of the primary cl cl clients we help are people trying to turn their side hustle into a primary hustle. And one of the pieces, like one of my, one of the 10 requirements of that is you got to have a risk, risk tolerance to make it happen. Right. So matching to the right type of people is a, is a fantastic way. And, and I can see from talking to you that your mindset, um, has driven you to this level of success. And I also want to expand that. So, cause the mindset that most people think of is, you know, like Jocko Williams, Ed Milet, tough, tough mindset, right? So that's, that's part of it, right? That's, that's the first step. That's, I'm in the game. I'm not going to stop. That's the first mindset, right? The second way is to, to expand that is when you learn to get an, an aligned mindset with a target, right? Now you can, you'll get there eventually with, with being in the game and never stopping, but you'll go faster and make bigger jumps when you learn how to align with a target and how to master confidence in the unknown, because that's the biggest challenge right now, because Confidence is a sign of, of alignment, right? So, so, and like when, when, and if you want to create alignment with a target, making a decision, like I'm going to hit this target and, and I'm not going to stop until I do, that's a decision, which I call an aligned frame. And that's, so you're in the frequency where the result will come to, as opposed to I'm 50% sure I can do this and then I won't get the answer. So you always want to start in an aligned frame as best you can. And then from that aligned frame, it creates the aligned mindset and creates the aligned action. I love that. So let's talk about um, being aligned with the target. So um, let's just say, for example, you got a target and let's just say you want to buy X amount of real estate in the next 12 months. How do you determine if you are truly aligned with that target? Really simple. It's how certain you are. 100% certain is alignment. 99% certain is misaligned. Just 100% just certain that it, the outcome is going to occur? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it's it, this, and this, and most, most entrepreneurs, cause I've been an entrepreneur and I've for 15 years now, I've been through five companies and you know, it's, I've had times where I worked for years and it didn't work. And my biggest breakthrough in this, this coaching methodology that I developed alignment coaching was really understanding the premise that hard work doesn't create success. Alignment with success creates success. Hard work simply gives you more opportunities to get into alignment with success. So the average entrepreneur is working towards a target. And their confidence and certainty is going to vary between 70 and 99 or hundred percent, right? The simple way to think about that is if you are 80% certain you can hit the target, that's like having the address in your car's GPS be 80% right. Mm -hmm. You may get there, yeah, but it's not going to be the fastest route. How do you balance setting the appropriate target then? Because some targets you might be in hundred percent alignment with because you feel hundred percent that it's going to occur and you're going to accomplish it because it might be a, a, an, e an easier target, but. I think in order to push yourself, you know, maybe you want to set a, a, a more aggressive target and maybe we don't hit it, but we're going to, we're going to try everything we can to get there. So how do you know the right tar level of target to set? Well, I typically will recommend people have a known target, okay. which is something they can build a plan to as like the baseline. And then, and, and, a, and a stretch, my, my thing is impossible targets because that's my book, do the impossible. So, and there's a three question process to create those goals because the, and, and a great question to ask yourself if you're aiming at the right target is if success was guaranteed and you couldn't fail, what would you do? Because what happens for most people is that when we start aiming at targets that are out of our comfort zone, so the average person may grow three to 5% every year, even though it's possible to five or 10X every year, right? But if you, if you sit there and you have a goal that's 10X, the emotional contrast is so big, most people can't manage it. 
and they create so much uncertainty. So they aim at a level of their comfort zone. So that's why the average person is making the same income decade after decade. When the reality is you can align with any a target once you learn how to change your mindset. And what we've, I've figured out how to do faster than anybody else is how to change core mindset in minutes so that you want to aim at an impossible target because by aiming at an impossible target, it brings up all the holes in your game. It brings up all your soft spots mm. and, and, and it brings them up fast. And that way we can coach you through those process, through those misalignments that are running. Otherwise, when you aim at that smaller target, that misalignment's still there. You just can't feel it. So you're operating at 80% of your potential. So basically the, the model I kind of go by is how big do I aim? And I'm like, there's no limit, right? Now, I'm only going to make a billion dollars tomorrow. Like, you know, you, you got to be aligned with the target. Something but, that is, uh, that's going to give you some sort of chance of, of achieving it. Yes. Yeah. And, and with the impossible. If I say, hey, I'm going to go, I'm going to go become an NBA player next year. The likelihood that happens is 0%. But if that really was something for you to be, you'd find a way, right? Like if it really was supposed to be an NBA starting in, in 38 years old, then you would find a breakthrough to make it happen. If it was supposed to be. If it was supposed to be. Right. Right. But uh, that's not supposed to be. But you wouldn't be inspired to do it if it wasn't supposed <laughs> that's to true. be. That's true. Okay. I like that. Okay. So, so the questions you want to ask yourself when you're setting a goal is number one, what do you want? Write down the answer. Okay. Then in relation to the same target, okay, what's possible? Write that down. And then the third one is what is impossible, completely impossible, but would be fun to do anyway. Because the first question, what do you want, is based on past reference. The second question, what is possible, is based on external reference, what you see other people do. The third question, what is impossible but would be fun to do anyway, is based on internal reference. And it's usually, when, when I ask clients this question, they kind of go silent. They say something that surprises them, and then they repeat it and get excited because it's literally a, a, an instinctive, intuitive target coming from them. And when you aim at those targets, like, Aiming at 10x targets and things like that, the average person isn't going to do. But when you're aligned with your, in, your, your intuitive version of that, that's where the magic comes because that goal transforms you. Like you're talking about how much you transformed in the past year. The reason we aim at those goals is because it transforms us. And the faster you're open to growth, the faster you can grow. But most people don't, aren't open to that much growth because they can't handle that much growth. Yeah, man. Uh, it's, it's crazy for me. I'm like, the more I get in this game, the more I, I, I get addicted to the game, the growth. And I'm always looking for that next level and the, the next, whatever I can do to get a, a, an edge to get to that next level. I'm like, I want it, let's do it, you know? And um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a powerful thing and it's a real thing. I used to be like a little bit afraid of the growth because I, I just never was around. I was never exposed to it, you know? And I was always kind of operating from a scarcity mindset um, in a fearful mindset because that was just kind of my surroundings at the time. And, um, you know, not to take any risk, play it safe and that sort of thing. And I had to like really train my mindset to get out of that into this, which is like the abundance mindset. And I'm like, now I'm like, let's just, well, there's so many decisions that need to be made every week. And I'm like, let's just make a decision and go. And if it's the wrong decision, it's okay. We'll pivot. But the idea is we're just making decisions because we, the more decisions we make, the faster we grow. Well, yeah, that's a polar opposite shift you made from air traffic controller, precision, no mistakes to being an entrepreneur, there couldn't be a bigger contrast. Right. No, I know. Exactly. So, uh, and, and, you know, I, I make mistakes every single week, but that's how we grow. But that's, that's and what it is to be human. Yeah. You're supposed to. Absolutely. And so, you know, I tell the team all the time, like, guys, it's not a big deal to make a mistake. Like, it's not a big deal. We pivot and we get better and that's it. And that's a clear example of why you've had the success you've had over the past few years. One of the other, other my 10 things that people struggle with in turning their side hustle into the full-time hustle is, you know, getting a staff to do the work, right? Because they don't give the staff the runway to fail. If you don't give the staff the runway to learn and fail and process, you're never going to grow. And it's always going to be you doing everything. And I can see from the work you're doing, you provide that space for them to learn and fail. And that's why the business keeps growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So um, back to this. So, so what do you want? What is possible? What is impossible? Um, and so from this, the idea would be to come up with something that's impossible that like would be fun to do. And then that's your, that's your ultimate target. Well, if you want, we can ask these questions to you right now, if you want, you know, like it's, if you're, if you're setting a goal, but you get to choose the goal, right? So it's a good exercise to pick the right target. So, because a lot of times people will just pick the target and it's usually, what do I want? Right? So we want to go through, what do I want? We want to write it down. We want to go through what is possible. And that'll give you answers based on external reference. So if you see other people like you, 
doing higher, you'll get a bigger answer there. If you're already beyond external reference, you'll get the same, you won't get an answer there, right? If you go to what is impossible, that's like, what's your potential is. And usually there's some excitement there. So a lot of times I'd say probably 90% of the time, the person, when the client, when they discover that impossible target, they start aiming at it. Now that may not be the thing they eventually do, but that's the next journey of their path is to be aimed at that level. And it starts to create the transformation. Yeah. yeah so, so let's run through it then. I'm, I'm down to do that, but cause it's, it's an interesting time that I'm in because I'm not exactly clear on what this next level is for me. Um, we just accomplished a target basically. And, and a year ago, we started a boutique hotel fund. Um, we have four hotels in it now. And we just, we just bought two boutique hotels in the last like four and a half months. And so I told the team, I said, Hey, let's take a break from buying. Let's close out the fund with these four existing boutique hotels. Let's focus on operations. Let's focus on stabilizing these properties. We're doing, um, you know, repositions with two of them. The other two are already stabilized in, in cash flowing. And I'm like, let's focus on what's in front of us and let's get these things really humming so we can give us and our investors the best opportunity to have a nice refi in the highest possible appraised value when we go to refi uh, to maximize our returns. And so we're just really focusing on that right now. Um, and so we're gonna take a break from buying for probably six months. And then, you know, later, maybe Q4 this year, we'll gear up again. And so I don't know what that next thing kind of looks like, but I will say this, Jason. So um, the thing that kind of makes it a little bit, I guess, just congested uh, in my mindset is there's a, there's a few different arms of the business. So, um, you know, one is the property management arm, which really is a not-for-profit thing. We manage our own boutique hotels. We manage our own short-term rentals. And we also manage for third-party owners, very select few, but it's not a, it's not for profit thing. We really just do it to give us full control of these assets. And then um, we have Summers Capital, which is our uh, company to where we have all these passive investors. We have over hundred investors now and um, they invest. We do all the work. We give them uh, tax benefits and passive income. And then um, the third arm is the, the content. It's the podcast, it's the social media. So, you know, I mentioned before we started recording, um, we hired Parker, our, our content manager a year ago. And it's been great. And so uh, three weeks ago, we decided let's double down on the content. Let's do more content. Let's get better at the content. And um, how, are we, how do we get there? We need to hire a second content person. So we put out that job posting and um, we were able to lock up uh, yesterday the uh, videographer of Venus Williams, professional tennis player, which is huge, Congrats. right? Congrats. And so right, pl right time, right place. So he's going to be starting with us next week. Um, and so now we're going to double down on a lot of the stuff and, and get a lot better. Now, that said... It's really three arms of the business. Oh, there's a fourth arm. Okay, fourth arm. Yeah. The fourth arm is our online um, education uh, community. So we have a boutique hotel mastermind, and we're also in pre-launch right now for the seven-figure creator. Because um, I had a lot of people reaching out. They want to go to coffee. They want to go to lunch, and they want to ask me about what I did to build the brand so quickly, and how to start a podcast, and you know how to start building their audience so they can monetize it, right? Get more leads for their business, raise private capital for real estate, whatever it is. And, and so I was like, man, like I was spending so much time going to coffee with these folks. I'm like, why don't I just like start like a online community? And then that way we can help more people. So anyway, so it's the online communities, it's Summer's Capital, it's the management company, and it's the brand and the podcast. So it's like basically four things, right? So it's a little bit congested. And so when I'm like, okay, what's this next level for me? You know, I'm very clear on like what that is for like the content and stuff like that. The property management, like that's not something that we're really trying to scale. It's just like that grows as we buy more real estate. Um, but with Summer's Capital, that's like first and foremost. And for me, I'm like, dude, I don't know what the next level is because we have bought these four hotels and now I got people like Tarek Al Musa reaching out. He wants to do a boutique hotel. He's like, I'll bring, I'll bring capital, I'll bring TV exposure. Um, I got guys like Brian Malarkey on Top Chef. They got these, he's got all these uh, really nice restaurants in San Diego. He's like, dude, let's, let's do a boutique hotel. I'll do the food and beverage and you do the hotel. So I'm like, what's the next move? Do we do like a bigger hotel like that? I don't know what the target is. So how would you um, give someone like me some guidance on that? Well, I would, I would ask you, what do you want? Mm. So I'll say this. I want to build a, I want to build a really big thing. So I want to build a really big thing, whether it's the podcast, I want to help a lot of people. I want to help a lot of investors. I want to buy a lot of real estate and uh, I want to build a, a really big thing. Podcast too. Why did your voice get quieter just now? Mm. <laughs> um, I think, I think I'm just, that? yeah, I think it's um, me just trying to be a little bit humble. And, and yeah, and that's why I picked up on that. I was like, so it's, so the next evolution is in the unknown, right? So you can't, you can't get it yet. 
So it's, it's, very, it's impossible to set goal setting in the unknown like 12 months in advance. It doesn't work. Because if you try to do, like let's say you're trying to do that next level in 12 months, you're, you're going to be kicking into your brain, which is your past references, and it's not going to work, right? So the way we get information from life on how to grow and expand in the unknown is we get breadcrumbs. We get one step at a time. So you really need to take, if you're looking for action steps, you could ask yourself, okay, if I'm going to create something really big in this next year, what's the most important thing I could do in the next two days? Because there's actually a process I run with clients and you can actually see where their intuition kicks in because the best going into the unknown is, is really an intuitive journey, right? And what I would really encourage you to do is like that thing you said, say it again, say it again, say it again. And, and so what's actually happening is your new level of success is contradicting some of your old reference points in your mindset, right? What do you mean by that? So like you said, I, I feel I'm trying to be humble. Like, cause it, I, it, it's, you weren't a hundred percent aligned with that result. Mm. There's a reference in your mind that says, well, if I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a braggart. I don't want to be greedy. You know, I'm going to be a good person. So there's, there's, there's contradictions in your mindset running. And that's the way everybody's mindset runs, right? Because our brain catalogs everything from the past. And anytime you set a new target, it's the secondary voice that comes in. I'm going to go do this. And then the, the second voice comes in, right? So to create alignment. And what we do, what I do specifically, is I remove the second voice. So you want to start to become aware of those voices because five, 10 years ago, we weren't operating the same frequency of reality we are right now. So positive thinking was the way to go. But we don't want to do positive thinking because positive thinking is ignoring the negative thoughts. We want to be aware of the negative thoughts because that tells us we're out of alignment so we can shift into a frame of alignment. And that's kind of how we start to play at that higher level is to not construct the plan construct the version of you that knows how. And, and what, the way we do that with coaching is we start to, okay, well, that right there, there was, when you said that, I'm, I'm, here's the next thing, I wanna do something big. I don't know, how certain were you? Or you could do well, that. and I'll tell you why I wasn't certain. I'll tell you why I was uncertain yeah. because I'm a big believer in like clearing the plate before you move on to the next thing, right? And so um, I want to really focus on what's in front of us and that's stabilizing these four hotels right? Two of them we're, we're repositioning right now. We're in the uh, middle of a big renovation up in Sonoma Coast. And so I want to, you know, stabilize those, really drive the review averages, get those things cash flowing so we can, you know, have a nice refi. And then, you know, with our online communities, that's in front of us too. So got to take care of that. Got to grow. We're starting a, another one in the content space. So that's in front of us right now. So the idea of like buying another deal right now and like thinking about the next, it's like, it's, it would distract me from what's currently in front of me. And that's why that's not in alignment right now because I'm like, let's finish what's in front of us and stabilize it. Then we'll move on to that next thing. Does that make sense? It does. And I would challenge yeah. you on that. Okay. I would let's challenge you on that. I would, I would be like, if success was guaranteed and you couldn't fail, what would you do? Would you start the new thing? Mm. Yeah. I mean, I would, but I know my capacity is only so much at a time. So there's the, but right. There's the secondary yeah. thought, right? Yes. So it's, so the first thing is if success was guaranteed, you'd, you'd do it. So what's actually happening right now is your model of success that you used to get here, you're now outgrowing that model because the model of, I got to clear my plate of everything before they do the next thing. That's was one of your components to success in the previous phase of your success journey. You're at the next level now where you need to start having generals under you instead of you just being the general. Mm. That's, that's the answer. And, and the first step to making that happen isn't to go start hiring. It's to do it in your mindset first. You hold that in your mindset I am going to find a way to start growing this right now. And, I, and it's going to, and, and I'm not going to blow, I'm going to do it in a way that everything grows. That's an aligned frame. And that will start generate the thoughts, the ideas, the connections, because I'm looking over here and I see this happens. Entrepreneurs, they become successful. And, you know, Brandon Turner, I talk a lot, but he had the same thing with growing up in all these businesses. It's right. Then you have to have generals underneath you versus being the so, general, right? So, okay. Yeah. I'll say this though. Yeah. So October of last year, yeah. I promoted a team member to like COO and I took a step back and I let her, everyone reported to her and she kind of ran the show and, um, I, I focused on content and kind of being a visionary in, in what we're, we're alluding to right now. And, um, it was a mistake on my end and, um, you know, maybe, maybe it's not a true representation of, of, you know, the, the, the true thing that needs to happen ultimately, but, um, you know, it's on me ultimately it, it, it falls on me and it was, it was my fault, but 
you know, the team was coming to me and they're like, we hate working for this person. We came here to work for you. And like, we don't like how this thing's being ran. This is not a good representation of our brand and all this. And so it ended up crumbling. And so, um, I had to step back down. This person's no longer with us. And, um, you know, that was a learning lesson for me that like, I, I felt like we're too early right now for me to like take a step back and kind of do that right now. Like, I feel like this is going to grow the quickest in the way that I want. If I'm like, kind of like a little bit more hands-on right now. And yes, that's going to require more of my time, but like, it's the culture that I want. And it's like the, the vibe that I kind of want right now. Now, a year from now, two years from now, maybe not, but at least for the immediate future, I think I need to be like in this right now and like, in like building this with my team. So I, I would disagree with your assessment a little bit. Okay. Okay. Let's hear it. I, I, would, I would say that it wasn't a mistake. Yeah. It was a bad hire. Yeah. Right. You, and, and, and finding someone to fill your shoes is, is, is very challenging to do because what usually happens is we try to find somebody just like us, but there's only one you on the planet. So that never happens. Right. Understanding whether you're a visionary or an, an artist, or an entrepreneur, or, in, or an integrator, or the manager is a is a very is hard to get at first. That's one of the skills you had to learn to really grow your business. Like I hired a CEO three months ago who was a, an amazing manager and integrator because I'm a visionary and I can't integrate for crap, you know. So there there is a way to do that, but it just did it, it didn't work. But when I see people growing in the way they should and it doesn't work, like it's like okay, you got to recover from that. But what can we learn from that? Maybe some coaching would have helped you get the right resource in there. A lot of times it's easy to hire somebody internally because we want it to work, even though they're not the right person. Mm. Right. Yeah. That's so, good. So you, you can absolutely ma maintain the culture, but bring in a resource who does it for you because the way that this thing is going to grow is when you start focusing on tasks that are $5,000, $10,000 an hour and up. If it's below that, someone else should be doing it. Yeah. And I do, I do, I, I really do focus on, on, on the higher, uh, dollar tasks, but, um, you know, I, I do have a lot more of a pulse with the different departments within our business. And I do a lot more one-on-ones with the key, the key leaders on our team. And, uh, I feel like at least for right now, uh, at least for right now, I think this is, this is good for me. Well, that's, if, if that's, if, if you're happy, that's, that's all that matters. Yeah. Right? I like, like, I like it. I'm actually like, well, look, I'm like, I'm sober right now. I'm not even drinking. Like I'm, I'm very clear. And, um, I think for right now, like me kind of being hands-on work, building this with my team kind of side by side, but I'm not doing the, the, you know, the $20 an hour task by any means. I'm just, you know, a lot more hands-on with, you know, the vision and, and making sure things are, are being taken care of. Yeah. Cause that was, that was the lesson. Yeah. It was the lesson. Yeah. That, that. Culture is a key to your success. Yes, it is. It was. It is. And, and, yeah. and now you know. Yeah. She, you know, we don't have a, a, a corporate vibe here by any means. So it's not corporate at all. And I don't want a corporate vibe, but, um, you know, this, this other individual was trying to kind of make it corporate and all that. And uh, the rest of the team did not like it at all. Yeah. Um, so anyways, I don't know. So, uh, you know, uh, obviously we're going to clear what's on our plate. And um, if we can you know, hit these specific hurdles within, uh, what's in front of us right now. I'll be, I'll be a happy man. And then we'll look for that next kind of buying opportunity then. But yeah, I don't know. It, it, it kind of feels good to stabilize everything that you got. Well, right? yeah. Cause then well, it's yeah. like, you, you, you push, you grow. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, like let's stabilize what we have and then let's move on. I don't know. And that kind of feels good to me right now. But to your point, when I get there, then I'm going to really, I really have to get clear. And like, what is this next move? And number one, if you're, if you're happy where you are, that's what matters, right? Just because someone else sees a growth for you doesn't mean you have to do it. It's your life. It's your business. You get to do whatever way you want to. Right. And, and I just, I just, when I'm coaching clients with that, I check in that that point of view isn't based on a reaction or fear, because if, if it's based on a reaction or fear that implies avoiding the growth to solve it. So I pick up on those subconscious clues like that. So it's so, because when we start to remove and, and we, we're, this is a short conversation right now, but there, because there's always a way to do the next thing. And my point is always like, cause the way I understand mindset to work is I would encourage you to make sure that you're in the mindset that that next level is already happening without doing anything because you can look at the situation and say, I'm going to balance out right now because that's what needs to stabilize. That's what I need to do hundred percent. And you could say, I'm going to grow and I'm not ready for the next level. You're then you're shutting off that growth energetically. So you can say, I'm going to stabilize right now. And the next level is happening. 
then your stabilization, your time's going here, but you're in the aligned frame for that next evolution to come in. Yes. Right. So like, for example, I have, I didn't work out for like 10 years and I, I realized, you know, I'm fifth turned 50 last year. I got to start Congrats, working man. out. You look great. Thank you. I started working out, yeah. you know, I've worked out five days a week for the past 10 months, mm -hmm. you know, and, Good and for you, you look great. Yeah. Thank you. And for, t for two months, I, I, for two months, I told myself I was working out before I started working out. I literally shifted my frame and I'm like, I work out five days a week. I do it every day. And then literally a month later, I was at, at an event talking with one of the, my team coaches. He went to the gym. I went with him and boom, it was just done. So there's a lot of power in holding the frequency of that future vision, mm -hmm. that alignment, so that life will bring it to you. That's so good. Uh, talk a little bit about frequency. What do you mean when you say like, you know, high frequency, low frequency, all that? What do you mean by that? So there's, so our bodies are made of atoms. Like I remember seventh grade science and he's like, okay, our bodies are made of atoms and an atoms like looks like a little planet, right? A nucleus and an electron, right? And he's like, atoms are 99.9999% free space which means the percentage of this universe that's actually solid is 0.0001%. And I'm like, wait, wait, well, I, does, something's not making sense here. So I started to understand that we're all energy. There's also this law of attraction thing, right? And what I discovered, the process of called frame shifting, is this is where frequency comes into play, is that in 2000, 2019, Jason Dries coaching was just me. At the end of that, I started working with Brandon Turner. I started getting more clients. Then I got on the Bigger Pockets podcast and the business exploded overnight. Like literally me to seven employees in 30 days. And I'm doing a group coaching program called the Mindset Academy. I'm doing four hours a week while I'm coaching 65 coaching clients and I'm building an entire new company. Like I'm just, I'm just so fried, but the money was rolling in because we 10 x in that quarter. It was awesome. By raising your prices too? Actually, no, it just, we didn't raise the price. It was really? just, it's just the vault. Just we, more volume. We, the mark, yeah. yeah. And, and basically every day I'm like, don't screw it up. Don't screw it up. And yeah. I'm sitting here going, Oh my God, I, I can only get done 10% of what needs to be done. And I'm sitting here going, I'm so overwhelmed. And then I had this thought process that said, okay, today was November 1st and I was completely overwhelmed. August 1st, I had it dialed in. Everything right before the podcast, I was, everything was dialed in. But if I took Jason from 10 years ago and brought him to August 1st, he would have been completely overwhelmed. So that told me there was a Jason in the future that if I pull him here, he'd know what to do. And I started thinking about the Jason in the future and all of a sudden the stress went away and my doubt went away. My confidence and my certainty went up. And what I didn't realize at the time is that's what a frame shift is. Holding the future version of you that does it shifts your frequency. And I did that, it got out of stress and I did it over and over again. And then when I figured out how to coach that, my client's results have just been exploding over the past two or three years. So frequency is, is basically like, you can be in a happy frequency, you can be in a sad frequency, right? And the way life actually works, if you can imagine a diagram, right? There's three circles. The big circle is frame. The middle circle is mindset. The inner circle is action. Now, our brains will say that action creates reality, right? But it actually doesn't. Reality creates your action, right? The frequency of you, your frame, creates the frequency of your thoughts, which is your thought pattern, which is your mindset, which creates your actions, right? What I figured out is instead of trying to solve life from finding the action, you simply move the frequency into alignment with the success, with the target. And when you move into an aligned frame, it then generates the mindset that's aligned that has the thought on what to do. Mm. Automatic. Can you elaborate on when you say reality creates the action? Yes. What do, what do you mean exactly? When you say so, so the frequency of you creates the frequency of your thoughts, which is your mindset, right? The thoughts creates your actions, right? So you could be, if you're in a happy frequency, happy frame, Happy mindset, happy action, sad frame, sad mindset, sad action. 90% certain entrepreneur frame, same mindset action, right? So what often happens is we're getting very specific frequencies around success or the parts of the business where we're out of alignment there and we're operating at 70 to 80% frequency. And we're trying to chase strategy by copying mentors instead of aligning with the target and pulling it in from the future version. Yeah, that's so good. If you love real estate investing, passive income, and tax benefits, but don't have the time, my company, Summers Capital, is buying boutique hotels right now. We source the deals, we renovate the properties, and we even handle all the day-to-day -day management, making it truly hands-off for our investors. If you want to learn more to see if we can help you, visit summerscapital.com slash invest to book a call with our team. Again, that's summerscapital.com slash invest. Now back to the show. So how would I identify what my future version might might? B, and then bring in that future version into a scenario today to be like, okay, how is that future version of me going to approach this situation? Can you give me a real example of a, the future version you want to connect with? 
maybe just like uh, what we just alluded to, when we just went over that example of like, okay, you know, I'm wanting to kind of clear my plate and stabilize what's in front of us right now. Um, and then we'll move on to what the next thing is. Maybe how would that future version of myself, you know, uh, respond to that situation? Well, we need to be more specific to that. So would you want the future version that knows what to do in this situation? Yeah. Okay. So can you get a sense of a future version of you tomorrow, next week, sometime in the future, who in this situation would know what to do? It's hard to say. Because so I don't know. Because I don't know what the future version looks like. Well, you know what I mean? Oh, so so yeah. this is, it's, it's not vision. It's not, it's not a vision. Because vision comes from the mindset, right? Think of it like, you know, you're sitting in the car and you know that person's looking at you at the red light. Like that's not using one of our five senses, right? So just, just, just think for a second, like defocus a bit and say, can you get a sense of a future version of you who if brought into this situation would know what to do? Yeah. Can you sense it? A little bit. Okay. And can you sense a future version of you who understands this frame shifting process that I'm teaching you now more than you do now? I could see it. Yeah. Okay. Can you sense that frame in the room here with us? Somewhat. Like, is it a direction? Can you see the direction? Um, it's still not clear though. I mean, I, I, hypothetically, yes, but I don't, I don't, it's well, not clear. Well, you're, 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 you're trying to get the answer too fast. Mm. Okay. Okay. So that's very common. And the reason why I asked if it's in the room with you, because 99% of the people I do this with, they can sense it. And if you watch from all my videos, me going like this, it's because my frame is right here. And I think that's just one way our brain helps us focus on frequency. So what you want to do is get a sense again of that version of you tomorrow, next week, anytime in the future, we bring that rich in here. He looks at this and goes, got it. Got it. Okay. So just put your attention on that version. Okay. Don't worry about the answer. You got to, you can't worry about the answer. That's the version. Now, if you hold it there, you can do this for 30 seconds or a minute, or you can do it again tomorrow, but you can frame shift, just sense it in a second. The answer will come when it's time to come. It may pop up instantly. It may have a process for you and it may lead you to that process, but that's what frame shifting is. Like, how do you feel? How did you feel in your body? Did you feel any different in your body? Um, I felt very calm. I, ver I felt very calm. Um, I would say it's interesting because like all the things that we're currently doing, I, I feel, you know, very confident about everything that we're currently doing. The unknown for me is because the growth is, is hap it happens so quick. Like if you would have asked me two years ago, if I would be where I'm at today, I would have, I would have thought you were crazy. Um, and then especially four years ago, five years ago. Even a year ago, I look back, I'm like, oh my gosh. But because of that, like a year from now, so like if we're talking May of 2025, I don't even know where I'm, like, I'm gonna be, you know? That's, that's the kind of the crazy part. That's kind of what I was just thinking about when you said, you know, future self and all that. I'm like, whoa, I, I don't even know. I can't, I can't fathom. But it, that makes me excited. Well, it is because that's, that's a great place to be because you, you've, you've executed on everything you know how. You're literally living in the unknown which basically means you're open to life. You're open to opportunities. Yes. You're opening to discovery. Yes. Like, and and, and what, what I really do is I help people get open, right? So, and, and while we want to have certainty, life, we don't control that much in life, right? We think we do, but we really don't, right? So the more certainty you can create in this space of unknown, the happier you'll be and the more successful you'll be. That's so good. That's so good. And it's so, it's so true. Like it, it's, it's freeing... Um, to be fluid and to be flexible with, you know, your future and decision-making and all that sort of thing. Um, obviously a lot of the, the stuff that we do in the real estate investing space, you know, we buy these hotels and stuff, you know, it's a, a 10 year projected timeline. And so we have to underwrite for that, but, you know, outside of those specific deals, um, and how it pertains to, um, the growth, generally speaking from a more generalized level that I'm very fluid with, you know, um, for example, 12 months ago, we're like, let's start a boutique hotel community, you know, and we did it right a year and a half ago. I would have never, that was never in the cards. Right. And so we started it, we ended up, you know, building this thing and the folks and connections we've been able to make, but also like the last deal that we bought in Sonoma, we actually partnered with a, a couple of folks in our, our mastermind. So like, you know, that opportunity would have never presented itself without it. Right. That's one, this, uh, seven figure creator, like that's something that literally was just an idea two weeks ago, and now we're already like implementing it. We're in pre-launch. You know, we like to move fast here. And I think that's where the growth happens. When we have an idea, we're like, if, if it's a good idea, anyone from the team, I'm like, let's fucking do it. And then let's start now. 
and you're continuing to get these breakthroughs and ideas because you're in alignment with them. Mm. And if I, and if I picked apart your mindset by asking what you believe, if we look at like a global level, I know a hundred percent, you believe you're going to grow and oh, you yeah. believe so without a doubt and, and successful. So, you know, at a macro level, that's, it's going to happen. You just don't know how yet. Yes. That is the, the, the first step in creating alignment. So you're, you have been creating and holding alignment with success at that global level because the global or macro frame is what the law of attraction responds to. What the happens to the average person or the entrepreneur that's struggling is they don't know what to do at the micro, like this week, they don't know what to do. So that uncertainty creeps into the macro level. So they got uncertainty up here because they're, they're so focused on the action. So the way to stay in alignment is to make sure at the global level, you're literally like, I'm going to, I'm going to hit this target because I'm not going to stop until I do like, boom, that's a line frame. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. I think for me, like I always, I always kind of operate, especially the more I grow, the more I kind of operate this way. It's like, you know, every quarter I'm like, okay, what's, what are, what are a couple rocks that we're going to, you know, basically do everything we can to achieve those, those rocks and nothing else matters. You know, that's, that's really macro level. And then all the little like mundane stuff from a micro level in order, like what are the resources, what are the to do's we need to, to accomplish in order to achieve those rocks? You know, we can figure that a lot out along the way. And that's not a big deal, but the goal is we, we, we accomplish a couple big rocks each quarter, um, that move the needle down the field. Right. There's a lot of like day to day stuff that don't, they don't move the needle, busy work, responding to emails, all that stuff that doesn't move the needle for me. Um, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I think about this all the time. You know, uh, growing up in, in elementary school, you know, people, the teachers always ask you like, oh, write down your five-year goal and your 10-year goal, right? And, um, you know, people ask me that sometimes, like, hey, where do you want to be in 10 years from now? But like outside of our real estate deals that we know we're going to hold for 10 years, I'm like, dude, I'm not even thinking more than 12 months out because like what I think I want five years from now is going to be different when I get there. And if it's not different, that means that I'm not growing. So like, if you would ask me five years ago, I mean, five years ago, I was an air traffic controller. I didn't own any investment real estate. So if you would ask me five years ago what I, what I wanted or if I thought I'd be here, like I would have thought I was crazy. But also if I had a five-year goal back then and I was like, I'm just going to stick to this thing, I wouldn't be where I'm at today because I wouldn't have been open to the growth and I wouldn't have been open to those opportunities because I would have been blinded by them. Now, curious to hear your thoughts on all that. Life is different now, right? Right. I'm, I'm a little older than you, you know, like in the nineties, the nineties, you could like bury that personal growth and just throw it away. Right. Now, personal growth is no longer optional, right? Your personal growth path and your business success path are wrapped together. So, so we're growing at such an accelerated rate right now. And an interesting perspective I get to see is how fast I can get clients through things to a place of alignment. And when I first started these concepts, like in 2014, it took six months for some clients to get it. Now I can basically get any client there in five minutes. Not because of, I'm sure my skill is more better, but everyone's operating at a higher frequency. The reason we can't see three, five years ahead is because it's a higher frequency than right now. We can't see it beyond that, right? So the, and, and life is really get growing to the point where we're just kind of being present and taking action. That's kind of like the evolution. We try to control the future, but the less we control and the more we're open to life, the more magic happens. But most people can't handle that unknown without being terrified because they, because everybody likes certainty, right? So if you could, like Tony Robbins says, like, if you, if you can, you know, the amount of certainty you can tolerate is directly proportional to how much happiness you'll have in your life. So creating that certainty and like really diving into your path. And right now, if it was, if you were supposed to have a five-year vision, you may have a five-year vision in three months, six months, but you are still in the ideation phase in the, in the next frequency of the next evolution. So you're only getting bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. It'll And if you, and, and if you try to create it now, you're creating it based on your mindset, which is past reference. And that's not your full potential. Yeah. And another reason I like the, the shorter timeline targets, like a quarter or even like 30 days is because the feedback loop is much quicker. When we have a 10 year target, like in, we use EOS here as an operating system and we do like level 10 meetings, but like, you know, um, they talk about come up with your 10 year vision. And it's like, yeah, we have, we have something just to check the box, but it's like, is, am I really in alignment with that? I'm like, no, I'm not. Cause it's so far away. And the feedback loop is, is, is not there. And the target's going to change as we, as we get closer to the 10 years. But the feedback loop is very important to me. So that's why I like these short frame, you know, timeline targets. It's like they're quick wins and each quick win builds confidence. I feel very like just 
calm energy right now just talking with you awesome yeah Fantastic. yeah yeah i feel it too yeah very free flowing and very i'm very excited too just for like i don't know man when i think about um you know where i was five years ago and i think about you know where i'm going like you said it's like it's the unknown i don't know but it's uh i'm i'm very excited for it like i'm very excited for the unknown yeah it's it's an exciting place to be and it's gonna be fun to watch where you go yeah for for the folks out there that maybe you know want to get out of their day jobs and they want to get into this next thing whatever it's going to be but they don't they they, they haven't found their passion yet because that was me for a while like i thought i thought i had found my passion i thought i was going to be an air traffic controller the rest of my career and um and then i discovered real estate investing and i was like whoa like this is my jam and now i'm like in business and entrepreneurship i'm like this is what i was born to do but i, I never realized it because i was never introduced to this so for the folks out there that maybe they're they're stuck or they're in a place to where they're like this is not their thing they don't feel like they're growing and uh they're looking for whatever that that next thing is the vehicle that's going to get them um into their passion something that, that they're going to be excited to get out of bed every day to go build what would you say is the best way for those folks to kind of get clear on what that what that next thing is I would say, and, and what I've learned is I didn't find my passion until I was 38 years old. Like I was on a, I had a Tony Robbins coach and one day he asked me, have you ever thought about becoming a coach? And it was like, I got struck by lightning that day. And it was the first time in my life when I was excited to do something like really in a career. And, and I used to always think, oh, I want to make a lot of money. So I don't work. So I don't have to work. Yeah. And anybody who says that haven't, hasn't found the work they're supposed to do yet. Say that again. Anybody who says they're, they, they want to, they want to retire so they can stop working hasn't found the work they're supposed to mm, do yet. That's so good. Right. And what I would say, cause I've been like, I read rich dad, poor dad in 2003. Mm -hmm. It made me nuts. Right. You know? Yeah. I, I didn't have a, a successful business for 15 years later, but the first step is getting in the game. That's the first step. So if you have a job and you want to have a side hustle and you don't know what it is, the first step is deciding I am going to figure out what it is, no matter what it takes. And, it, and, and the level one, the first entrepreneur milestone is earning your first dollar. It's like throwing noodles on the wall. Like we'll see what sticks. You can try real estate investing. You can try your own, maybe what you do for your own company, for yourself, what's in your ecosystem. But usually there's opportunities there if you're open, right? My first company was making race car driver cooling suits. Whoa. And like, because we found it, we found a niche. Now we didn't make a lot of money, but it was a great experience. But that was what started my journey, right? Yeah. And then when you get to the second phase of an entrepreneur, which is, replacing your day job, then it's really about complete total ownership and going all in. You got to buckle down to get it done, right? To get across that line. Phase three, where you're replacing yourself in the business, that's a complete inverse. And that's where 90% of entrepreneurs never make that shift mm. because phase two is control freak, manage everything. Phase three is let go of everything. It's a polar opposite. Yeah. Um, I got a question for you. So, um, you know, I think one of the reasons um, I've seen some success relatively quickly is because, uh, unlike most people, I, I decided to go all in, right? So I cash out the 401k. There was no backup plan. You know, once I cash that out, I'm like, I got to make this work. Right. Um, and then I, I left this, uh, you know, FAA career where there was a pension and job security. I walked away from that to go do this. And I'm like, I got to make this work. And, um, I went all in and, you know, I operate every day and today, like there's no backup plan. Like, I'm all in on everything that we do. And, um, and I think when there's no backup plan, you burn, burn the boats, um, you accomplish things that, you know, you never thought that you could accomplish. And so I'm a big believer in that. Um, but when do you think the right time is for the folks out there that maybe are, are interested in getting their feet wet? Because a lot of folks, let's be honest, they, they, they want to get their feet wet, but they don't want to jump in the water. Um, and when you, when you dabble, you know, life rewards those who go all in. So, so how do you determine um, when the right time is to, to go all in mindset wise on, on that new thing? Well, it was yesterday. Ooh, that's so good. Be, be, because now let's also note that your, your key to success wasn't cashing in your 401k. Your key to your success was the mindset and the decision framework you were operating in. What you did after that was do uh, you liquidate the 401k. So the thing to understand is that the mindset of success is basically, I am going to find a way to hit this target because I'm not going to stop until I do. Like that's a repeat after me I use with clients. So you can try that out loud. You can say, I take full ownership of my life and everything in it. I'm going to find a way to hit this target because I'm not going to stop until I do. And that puts you in a complete total state of certainty and alignment. And now you're in a place where stuff happens. So 
whether it's, it would be impossible for you to leave your day job right now, doesn't matter. You can still start the frequency of it. But yes, I'm going to find a business. Yes, I'm going to figure out what it was. Yes, I'm going to work for myself. Yes, I'm going to create freedom of time and money because that's what we all want. Freedom. That's what we're after. But start now by choosing to walk that path. You may not, you don't even have to start taking action yet, but put your mindset in the end and in, in, in the result. It's going to happen. We just need to life, the process of life and it's going to happen. Yeah. I really like that. Um, another thing you said earlier in this conversation, which was, which is interesting, kind of resonates with me. Uh, you said for the folks out there that want to retire so they can, you know, do nothing are the folks that haven't found their true passion. And, um, that resonates with me because, you know, I think with bigger pockets and a lot of these real estate investors out there, they say, Hey, get into real estate investing. It's all about the passive income. You can quit your job and just go sit on the beach. And initially I was kind of sold on that when I got into real estate investing and I, I did reach a point to where I had that financial freedom and I traveled a little bit, but I quickly got bored. And, um, now like I'm, I, I'm so excited to come in here every single day and build this thing. And, um, it just gets me excited like that. That makes me a lot happier than just sitting on the beach doing nothing. Well, of course. Right. Like you, know? you, fa you found the work you're supposed to do. Yeah. Like if I, if I didn't want to have a, a team and all this payroll and all this expenses that we're doing, I could just go sit on the beach and live off of the, uh, the cash flow that that's produced from a lot of the real estate. Now we have a lot of payroll and a lot of expenses and, um, you know, I'm in here grinding and building it with the team. Right. And I, I, it's a choice for me to do that, but that's how I know I'm doing it because I truly want it. Right. Um, you see folks like, um, like Conor McGregor, for example, you know, when he, he comes back to fight, this guy's, you know, this guy's worth a lot of money, you know, um, his, uh, his whiskey brand, what's the name of it? Proper 12, that thing sold for like 600 million, you know? And, um, so this guy's worth a lot of money now. So when he comes back to fight, he's going to come back and fight, um, this summer. And, um, against Michael Chandler in July, but it's like Connor's fighting because he, he truly loves the game, you know? And, uh, it's the same thing here. Like I'm in here building cause I'm, I truly love the game. And, um, for me, I don't know if there's ever going to be like an end game or a target. Like, like I think the point is to keep playing the game. You know what I mean? That's what makes me happy. It is, you know, we're, we're here for the game. Right. And, and when you find that work you're supposed to do, like you just, you, you love to do it. And that's where the magic starts to happen. Yeah. All about the magic. What's maybe like a, a key shift or like takeaway that you work with a lot of clients that, that really helps them get clear on whatever that next step is, um, in, in their personal journey? Well, I think the, the biggest thing that we teach is that, um, number one, hard work doesn't create success. Alignment with success creates success. Like, because what often happens sometimes when we don't know what to do in business, we just, we just end up working. Right. And if you were lost in your car, you wouldn't just keep driving, right? You'd stop and get your bearing, right? So number one, alignment with success creates success. And number two is that your mindset creates your reality and you need to learn how to change it. The sooner you learn how to change your mindset, the faster you'll be able to create alignment. And that's, that's kind of like the foundation of this. Because what we're really teaching people is a new mode of operation. Because we, I grew up, you grew up in reality where it was basically pick a target, work hard, repeat. That's the goal. We're, we're teaching people the new model, which is pick a target, align with the target, flow to the target. What do you mean when you say flow to the target? Flow to the target, like grinding or flow. Like we, like most people think of coaching, think of accountability, right? We do, I do not do accountability coaching because accountability is basically somebody saying, Jason, I'm going to hire you to force me to do something I don't want to do. Like a personal trainer at the gym. Like a personal trainer. Yeah. So you only need accountability when you're out of alignment. Mm. And now that we are operating at this high frequency, it's very easy to change your reality and your thoughts. You just need to learn how you can shift into states of flow where you're aligned with life and just let it flow through you. Yes, that's, that's really good. Um, a good example of that is like, I recently stopped drinking and I hear a lot of other people when they stop drinking, they're like, they need this accountability group and all this stuff to force them not to drink. But I'm like, for me, it's been really easy. Like I haven't had one urge to drink because I, I, I'm so in alignment with it. You know what I mean? Like I don't yeah. need any accountability. Like I'm, I'm good on that. It's just, it's been a really easy switch for me. And I've never like took a break from drinking my whole life, but I'm so in alignment with this new life that I don't need any accountability. That's fantastic. Well, and, and the average person who may be struggling with addiction, like the, the solution to the addiction is in the discomfort. So when you're like, if you, if you drink a lot and you want to stop, 
when you stop drinking, there's an emotion that's coming up, right? And a lot of times we're drinking to control or change our state, right? The solution and how I stopped drinking and meeting things like that is that I fixed all the things that I was trying to numb, but yeah. I did the work. Yeah. I always say like, you know, as an entrepreneur or business owner, you got to go through certain seasons um, where you sacrifice certain things. And that's one of the seasons for me. But one thing I'm quickly realizing is like what I'm sacrificing with alcohol is not really a sacrifice at the end of the day. That's the fucking crazy part. No. You know? um, I, I've heard you say before that like whenever you do something new, it either is going to feel light or it's going to feel heavy. Can you expand on, on how you know if something feels light or heavy? Well, feeling of light and heavy is like alignment, right? And, and what I've discovered is that w with the, the big tool that I'm using is teaching people how to align themselves, their mindset and thoughts with what they actually want, what they really want, and removing the contradictions to that. Okay. And that process is what I showed you earlier called frame shifting is kind of the basis of that. And when we shift frequencies, like if you go to a higher frequency, you'll feel calm, more confidence, less doubt, lighter, more positive emotions. If you go to a heavy, a lower frequency, you'll feel doubt, heaviness. Like a, a good example of, of, a, of a reverse frame shift is you're driving in the car, you hear a song from 20 years ago and you remember something you did and you feel bad about yourself. That puts you in a lower frame frequency, yeah. right? So higher, higher feeling light in your body is one of the best indicators of we're, we're pointed in the right direction. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I always think about that. Whenever I do something new or I'm like, you know, hanging out with like a, a new person, I'm like, does this feel light or, or does it feel heavy? And, um, you know, same thing with these new targets. Like we we're talking about the, the no drinking thing. Like that feels really light to me. I you know, it feels great. Yeah. yeah. Well, Jason, I appreciate you coming on, man. I, I got to say, like, I, I feel super calm and, and clear. Um, just, just talking to the energy, the vibe has been really good. So um, I'm feeling really high right now, just really, really high on life and uh, very clear with everything, very calm. And uh, so thank you for that. Um, where can the folks get in touch with you, man? You guys can reach, you can go to um, gamechangingmindset.com. We'll get you to my site and my things. That's the easiest way to get me. You can follow me on Instagram or YouTube. Um, my podcast also is full of coaching sessions too. So if you want to start listening to some coaching, it's pretty much me coaching all entrepreneurs. I love that. And Instagram is at the Jason Dries. The Jason Dries, yeah. I yeah. love that. And we got to get you on uh, my boutique hotel mastermind call. Um, we do it on, I'll bring a guest speaker on usually on Tuesday. So um, we'd love to have you on, man. Okay, awesome. I'd love to. Okay. Uh, he's Jason Dries. I'm Rich Summers. Listeners, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.